Test, 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 testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. You got it. <coughs> testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. He's right behind you, pointing at Testing one two three. Okay. Okay.
One, two. Morena, 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 everybody. How are we doing? Are we doing well? Oh, good. Someone's doing well. That's great. Um, a very good morning. For someone, it may not be because we've got a lost car key, but it has been found. It's a Mazda car key. We've got an owner. We're giving away a car today. You've won a car. Congratulations. Um, do come and make yourself comfortable. We're going to kick this net hooey off real good real soon. We just had to find that key owner. So, you know, just keep mingling, keep the chatting, and we'll be with you in just a second. Come on.
Kia ora everyone and welcome to Net Hui. I'd just like to welcome our Tangata Whenua to the stage, please. You did that very well. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's a bit of mischief too. We get to do a lot of things together, don't we? Yeah. And we're both behaving ourselves. Ino Itaro, let us bow our heads in prayer. E tō mātou māti te rangi, ki a tapi tō ingoa, ki a tā mātou ranga tira tanga, Ki a metea tō e pai ai ki rungu te whenua. Ki reti anu ki tō te rangi. Ho mai ki a mātou e nai nei. He tara ma mātou mō tēnei rā. Muru mātou hara. Me mātou huki muru nei. E o te hunga hara na ki a mātou. A huki mātou e kawea ki e vaka wāngi engari. Haka rangi mātou i te kino. Nga huki te ranga tira tanga me te kaha me te kōria. Ake ake. Amine. E te ranga tira katoa. E kui mai koruma. Ngā iwi, ngā hau e whā. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou katoa. Ngā mihi nui. Kia koutou. I tae mai tēnei rā mō take ko te tumunako ki anō ho pai tu ae rau mata kui kui i tēnei rā whakahiri. A nei rā mātou te rōpū ko rau e ka nei rā rau i te korowae o te rangi Māori. Ki te kaua nei, ki rangi i te kaupapa o te rā. E tau nei i tēnei rūpū ngā he waha kōrero, hei whakamārama, hei whiti-whiti kōrero. Kia ora. Whiti e te reto o tariki. Kei te komako e kō. Ka rere ki uta, ka rere ki tai. Ki mai ki au, he hata menu ui o te au mā kui ki a te he tangata, he tangata, he council staff. Pēa. Te murai au hene e taku tonei huri tonu atu, ki te ahua turanga ka hoki mai. Ki te apiti o mano atu, ko tararu e tu nei. Ko mano atu e rere nei, ko te ahi kāro, ko ranga tāne iwi, ranga tāne rohi. Nā te hini au te ranga te pae taku hapu, urumu ki ngi te awe au taku ingo. Just a translation, because as usual, all the side knew, every word I was saying, but I'm a bit worried about the side here. You're looking a bit blank, especially that South African New Zealander at the back there who's going to lose when we play them this weekend in rugby. <laughs> but with such good sports, we, we, you know, we forgave and, and we let them, because they would have lost their coach if they didn't win that game last time. They played the All Blacks. <laughs> so we are such a loving team. And Got any American people here? Any Americans? One Americans? Do you know where the new, in America's Cup is? You know, heard about that? You don't know about the America's Cup? Have you heard of Samson and Goliath? We took you guys on and we won with barbed wire and fencing wire and everything. We beat you. That's nothing to do with our cordial. But it, <laughs> the first karakia I opened up with was obviously the Lord's Prayer, which is a personal prayer which I love because that is who's our Father who art in heaven. That includes you, all of you people. Isn't that good, eh? I'm well, not too sure. I don't, this is <laughs> dim silence. This is getting worse. Um, and then I went on to say, obviously, for God's blessing and kōrawai to be over your, your hui you're having. And those things are very important in your wahakori, what, whatever you have to say today, I'm sure it'll be great. I was watching a movie last night, nothing to do with my kōri at all, but did you see that thing on the guy who bought Facebook out? Has anyone seen that movie? It was on Sky the other night. It's an interesting movie to see what those guys went through and to see what technology is moving today. And he was the beginning of Facebook. He's the younger, youngest billionaire in the world. I'm going to be, it, I'd hate to have that much money. Trius would have a house full of shoes. <laughs> I would have a few sports cars and a jag and a chauffeur. No. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Oh, I told. 
Training to keep up. No reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora, thank you so much. Um, oh my gosh, a very warm welcome to NetHui. My name is Abby Simes Edmonds and I'm going to be your MC today. And we're just going to have the best time ever, eh? That's right, that's right. You'll learn to love me, it's all good. Good things take time. Um, I can wait. Nah, it's all cool. I'll give you some time. Um, but what I'm going to do now is pass it over um, to Jordan Carter, who is the chief executive of uh, Internet New Zealand. He's tall. He's wearing brown shoes today. He can't break dance. He doesn't have any pets. He used to have two cats. One died, but then the other one died later. He's doing okay now. It happened about 30 years ago. We're moving on. It's Jordan Carter. I feel like I feel like I've got nothing to say after that. But anyway, uh, Morena, everyone, uh, welcome to the first of the three Netui 2018 road trips. Uh, Co Jordan Carter, Toko Ingoa. Uh, my name is Jordan Carter, CEO of Internet NZ, and I've got a very brief welcome and thank you to you um, and to a few other people. First one I want to say is Internet NZ does the NetHui series because the internet is not just made by the technologists who sit in Silicon Valley. Uh, it's made in part by you, what you do with it, how you experience it. So the point of NetHui is to engage everyone who's interested in or affected by the internet in a conversation. And part of the conversation, and this is the only piece of advice that I ever give in these openings, is talk to the people here you don't know as well as the ones that you do know today. Because the point of the conversation is to open yourself up to different perspectives. It's a nice, friendly space to talk and think about technology and internet issues. Make the most of it by meeting the people you haven't met yet. Um, the important bit that I've got is the thanks to the sponsors, because we wouldn't be here without them today. I'm going to rattle through the list. If you wish to read the list more slowly, it's on this lovely uh, tape beside us. But for Platinum, thank you to Chorus. Gold sponsors, Palmerston.
Playing jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, dentist at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. And we're going to do one more. Fire. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open. Open door. Repeat that. Open door. I didn't understand that. Play open door. Play on the floor. Sing. <laughs> Get on the floor. Open the door. Open the door. Error. Hey, Here you go. Good rock. Uh. Uh. Open door. So you can see that technology isn't always the answer, but keeping it simple. So I'm very proud to um, talk to you today. I, I've been working across the globe in terms of eight countries of local authorities, and we've set up a group in Brussels to actually share ideas. And it was really exciting a couple of weeks ago to be talking to eight countries from Palmerston North. So everything we do, um, I want to bring back today to the city. Um, I've also developed some software in Palmerston North in conjunction with UCOL that we've now deployed across New Zealand, two states of Australia, all of Canada, and we're just moving into Sweden. So how's that for Palmerston North? Um, so it doesn't matter where you're located, the internet makes it available to everyone. I want to just um, start with a couple of people I brought to Palmerston North and I brought to New Zealand. One was uh, Larry Irving. He was the uh, former ICT advisor to the President of the United States, Obama, Clinton, and Bush. And he had a message that I thought was very powerful. His message was that data is the new oil of the 21st century. And you've probably heard that before. But what does that mean? How can we turn that into opportunities? And I'd like to share a couple of those with you. The chap on the right is the world's number one futurist. We brought him to Palmerston North as well. So um, just recently, the king of Saudi Arabia paid for him for 10 minutes to come to Saudi Arabia and speak. So very, very powerful. But his message is around taking us on a journey that we understand what's coming, that we can actually prepare. Because we don't want to be like New York um, or the United States. When they actually converted to motor cars um, with Henry Ford, etc., the unintended consequence was that 50% of the agricultural sector went um, overnight, lost, lost the, the, the produce that they were selling. We need to think about that as well. So I was thinking about open data, and I was in Australia, and a woman got up on the stage, and she said... I, at eight years old, I divorced my parents. I was homeless. I went from street to street. I did all sorts of things throughout my life. But today, I have a child. And today, I want to navigate all the data that the Australian government has on my child. So she set up a business. She mortgaged her house. She developed this tool called Hubworks. She has 1.6 million followers. They all pay $1 every year, and no one's left. That, that seemed to be a powerful way of saying, oh, this is about open data. This is about data that you, me, communities, um, families, businesses can take and develop into something that people need. I was in San Francisco, or we did bring San Francisco Innovation Department to New Zealand, and they told us about what they were doing. They were actually helping young children off the streets of San Francisco, eight years old, and taking them to the robotics centre of IBM and teaching them to code. And today there's a movement called Black Girls Code from eight to 17 year olds, and they're starting Black Guys Code. And it's not that we need lots of coders, I think we do, but it's about getting into the mindset of technology, of apps, of things to do. So what they did, um, just to finish there, was to go to the prisons People who had been in prison for 15 years now had an opportunity to start an online business 
because they taught them. They then gathered Silicon Valley CEOs into a room at the prison, and each of these guys presented. And it left a lump in your throat because they got up and said, I'm the CEO of this online company, and this is what I can do, and this is what I sell, and this is what I've done. What could we do in New Zealand? What could we do in Palmerston North? And um, I was thinking recently about, I was in Samsung, and they just got me thinking about, I hate travelling with a laptop through security through the US and that. What would happen if your mobile phone, now so powerful, became your laptop? Couldn't you just plug it in wherever you go and do whatever you needed to do? Any app you needed to start, any system you needed to operate from could be done anywhere, anytime. This is where it's going to go. This is just one of the little innovations that I could be travelling anywhere. So what they found in Samsung is they opened 40 applications simultaneously, which you can't do on a laptop, and then they picked it up and walked out of the room and the 40 applications were still live. So, watch this space. Just, just one of the many things that we can see. But today, my real reason to talking to you is I wanted to share an amazing opportunity that the city had. The city of Goyang is a sister city to Palmerston North. And they invited two of us to go over and experience a big data conference in Goyang, which is in South China. It's, uh, it's way in a, a very poor area in the mountains. So I wondered what we would find. It was very interesting. So we flew to Shanghai, and all flights, all flights out of Shanghai were cancelled. We waited 14 hours. But one flight wasn't our flight. How could a flight, when all other flights are cancelled, take off from the airport? And I, I found out, even though we arrived at one in the morning, it was because of the importance of this conference. The president himself sent a message. So when we got there at one in the morning, the customer experience was so amazing, there was a council waiting for us with a driver, took us for an hour in. The first thing we saw was this. Facial recognition, that's the hotel they took us to, very flat. But it recognised me just walking up, had all my credentials. So they didn't need to know um, whether I was valid or not, they went through. On the way in, I was asking them, how many people are going to this conference? And they paused for a second and said, 49,000. 49,000. <coughs> wow. And I found out that I wasn't the only country there for New Zealand. There were 28 countries invited, 553 internationals, and huge numbers. In fact, uh, they had a technology display that had 125,000 people go through. So I just want to share a few insights from that. So this is, um, they closed the city, they closed the schools, they got everyone to work at this um, big conference, big data, big data expo. So this is just the forecourt for people to come and go. The black building you can see, and that's only half of it, is the technology display. So you take the plaza in Palmerston North and times it six times and you'd at least get a close to the size of the technology display. It was huge. There were helicopters flying overhead. So it made you think, what's going on? There were police everywhere, cameras on you all the time and New Zealand flag flying. So here we are at the China International Big Data Expo. And they were saying that big data makes a smarter world. But the Chinese were saying, we can't do it alone. We need the rest of the world to work with us. So this was the opening ceremony. And um, it, it was huge. Lots of technology, lots of uh, digital, um, visual, AI, everything there. And very senior members of the um, Chinese government. So I was sitting next to the guy next to me and I said, Welcome, um, welcome, I'm from New Zealand. And he said, I'm from, I'm from uh, United States, California actually. I'm in San Francisco. And what do you do? I work for Apple, but I'm not the salesman. 
then what do you do? I run Surrey. I run Surrey? The guy next to me was um, from Germany. The next one was from Ethiopia. The next one... So we had these very, very talented people in the room. But this really amazed me. They said, uh, His Royal Highness will now speak. His Royal Highness? Prince Andrew came from England. And his message was, the UK needs to partner with China in order to actually develop artificial intelligence in a new world. One day we tried to get into our room, our big conference room, and security was so tight that Ethiopia helped us go round the back and we, we snuck in. <laughs> it was so tight because um, the next speaker, the speaker um, who was sitting in front of me, and we were in the front row, Mike Manson, all in Chinese, sitting in the front row was Jack Ma, founder of Alibaba. And he was talking about artificial intelligence was the way that they were going to alleviate poverty in China. They were going to use artificial intelligence, they were going to use mobile networks, they were going to create marketplaces so that farmers who were um, struggling because they were getting ripped off by middlemen um, could now have a marketplace to actually sell their produce and their goods. And without taking farmers away from their families, which was what they'd been doing, they were going to, through mobile devices, educate them on farming practices. So 250 videos would be um, put through, and they would actually learn from, from that experience. Um, it sounded really good. It was very, very good. They also showed us things such as, and we're coming into New Zealand like this, uh, 5G and 4G. So you had live streaming of both. So 4G at 109 megabits per second, and then 5G at 1.8 gigabits per second. And the difference was amazing. It doesn't quite show on here, but the clarity of 5G creates new opportunities. What are we going to do with 5G, and how are we going to make it work? This was interesting. In the 10 halls, 10 halls of technology, came across New Zealand Anchor products. And this is part of a, a Fonterra and Alibaba doing a joint venture to track and trace their milk powder. So this is my, uh, my colleague, a friend. Um, she was my interpreter for this thing. But I held over uh, my phone, over the QR code, and there it flashes up that it came from Waikato, Hamilton, the factory that it came from. So here we have now tracking, food tracking. And so one of the, one of the um, display stands was about food safety. In China, they're very worried about corruption, and I think they should be, and about how to track and trace food. So they've got a whole government agency working on food safety. Now, in Palmerston North, we have a food safety authority as well. And the Chinese were saying, why don't we partner together? So wouldn't that be a good marriage to um, bring them together and see if we could work on something globally that would track and trace and give confidence in the food that you're buying? And they have a whole range of products um, on the very right there that they were actually demonstrating how it was going to work using blockchain technology. This, this could be a game changer for the food industry. Robotics, the children love them. Robots everywhere. How are we going to work together with machines and people? How are we going to interact? Because they are coming, and they're coming fast. This is one I saw was an automated patrol vehicle. So this is a little robot that runs around, um, facial recognition, a whole range of things. I was inspired by it. But then I thought about, well, what could we do in New Zealand? This is in Palmerston North. This is a robot, four-wheel drive, 360-degree um, facial recognition, self-charges, um, and will run as long as it needs. It can actually has LiDAR, uh, all sorts of things, will not bump into different things, and is good for surveillance. $18 per hour to have one. Is that a game changer? It's something to think about. So trials are being undertaken at the moment. But these can also sense. So if it was in a warehouse at night and it, a chemical uh, spilled, um, this would sense it, or a fire or anything, and call out the emergency services. 
just one of the things that's, that's changing our world. This was really interesting. This is an um, autonomous mobile kiosk. So it can drive itself and stop. And this is something that's going to happen in our society. There's going to be a lot more mobile kiosks. However, there's a robot built into this. It will make you a cup of tea or coffee on a cup and saucer, and it does the dishes. Self-driving cars, autonomous vehicles. So this was a, a Chinese organization that actually built the technology to plug into an electric vehicle. So we got to go and drive in a self-driving car. And these were semi-autonomous. So as it, as it went around, um, you could actually take control of the car and um, take manual control, but then hit a button and it's fully automated. See the accuracy of where it stopped. Pinpoint accuracy of, of where it stopped. So this organization doesn't even have a workshop. They borrow other people's tools, they, they built this device, they got it going. What could we do if we partnered with them? How could we change cars to be semi-autonomous? And then one day, we'll have fully autonomous. One day, in Palmerston North, you'll be able to call up a vehicle, a bit like Uber, have it arrive, jump in it, take you to the destination, and it disappears. Now, they've worked out that um, if we all did that, we would, lead, we would need 80% less vehicles in the world. But my good friend Thomas Frey, who's a futurist, worked out that if you do that, you're going to have to replace those autonomous vehicles every year, once a year. So we've lost one industry, now we've got to create another that's actually going to produce new vehicles per annum. This is just um, something I noticed uh, driving around China was these little cars, um, little electric cars you hire for an hour at a time. So you drive from one place to the other and just let it go. These are just coming into Auckland right now. So incredible um, little electric vehicles. So just trying to actually reduce congestion, take public transport to where you want to go, and then um, go from there. This is a very interesting display. It was on a self-service supermarket. No checkout operators. So what you did, we well hold your phone up, the door's open so it facially recognises who you are. You go in and grab whatever you want, you pop it on the counter, you hold your phone up, and you go. And I started to think, that's, um, everyone was amazed by the self-checkout um, service, so, and, and you know Amazon and others are, are building this. But what I've learned is, in Auckland, um, Callaghan in, um, Institute has given a million dollars to a company to develop a supermarket trolley that you put the goods in and it automatically um, adjusts on your phone the bill. You take it out, put it back on the shelf and it deducts off your phone and when you're ready to go, you walk out and it's done. So that in New Zealand is more innovative, I think, than what we were seeing in China. So we have quite a lot of skills here that could be developed. That supermarket trolley, they're looking at, well that trolley, they're looking at using it in any shop. So you could go into this shop or that shop. The trolley is automatically geared with cameras and sensors to know what you're putting in and what you're taking out. This is a, um, a, a data, a big data server room. They're modular. You can just um, pick them up and you can put them and build onto them. So store, storing large amounts of data now what would happen in Palmerston North if we could set up a big data centre or an, a, a, an industry of big data centres? We have the land, we have the power, we're away from the ocean, we have the climate. What would happen if we could do that? What opportunities would that create with the university, with ourselves? And that's something that we would like to explore. This is something by L'Oreal. Um, my colleague, um, who's, who's a great international relations person from Palmerston North, walked up to the screen and she could actually do all her makeup virtually. So she could do a face up. Her, the makeup you see on her face um, she's just, is, is a virtual reality. That image, you never know who's taking photos, but that image appeared across um, all of Shanghai. 
yeah, it was in all the trains and the magazines, everything. So um, you never know, he's, he's taking a photo. But then I got to think, I was sitting in the hairdresser the other day and they were saying, well, what could they do? What about the smart mirror? What happens if you could see what your hair was going to look like before they actually cut it or coloured it? So what would happen with clothes? If you could see them on before you actually tried them on? And this, this technology is already here. Then take it one further. These are 3D printed clothes. So what can I say? You could see your hair, you could see the clothes, and then you could print them while you're having your hair done. Yeah. And shoes. <laughs> and jewellery. Um, I know I've only just got a few minutes. This is something I took in Palmerston North because I wanted to share it with you. This is a camera that recorded a road of video footage, but it, but it was actually able to determine how many cars how many bicycles, how many men, women, trucks, animals, children, buses and motorcycles off the footage. Instead of that little black strip you see across the road and someone go donk donk, and that counts one, imagine the technology that we now have at our fingertips. This was a big data centre in uh, Goyang that they took us to. And there's just a couple of things I wanted to tell you about that. One is they were using artificial intelligence for a whole range of reasons. The first is they built a radio telescope and powered it up. And using artificial intelligence, they're able to discover nine new planets. The second thing they did was they were building a highway and the mountainside beside it collapsed and crushed the highway while cars were going through it. So what they did was they used artificial intelligence to say, how many cars did you predict we were going through at the time, and where should we start digging? So it analysed and said, look, I believe there'll be one car in this location because of the time it was, dig there. And sure enough, they found the car and rescued the people. So some really good, good uses to it. Um, I'll skip that. Uh, drones are really taking off over there, but in New Zealand we 3D print drones and we export to 66 countries, so we are quite advanced. But this is something to think about in the future, drone taxis. Drone taxis will be very popular by 2030. This is um, 3D printing houses, and if you believe you can't do it, here's some very early examples. Not that flat. But what say you could actually start printing something a little bit bigger? This is a complete 3D printed mansion, 3D printed office block, and the ability to design your own house, all coming right now. Um, printing of food, what opportunities does that create? Why aren't there 3D printing companies starting up in New Zealand? Where are they? What's happening? I'll just skip through that. Um, this is a, in the Glasgow University where they're actually 3D printing your tablets, your pills. So it's a pill printer, personalised for you. Um, the, the next thing we noticed very, very quickly was digital humans. They are coming. This was um, this is something that I picked up in Deakin University when I was over there in March. And they've invented a personal assistant to go with a student. And I don't know if we've got time, we haven't really got time to show you, but what this does is it actually treats the student um, as a friend. So it actually works out what their schedule is, how they're going. If they're behind an assignment, it offers to ring up the lecturer or, or contact them and to actually readjust their schedule. It actually works out what study books they, um, study research they need and serves it up. It helps them get their assignments. It actually talks to them about all the problems that they have. This is available it's going to be commercialised this year, completely developed in Australia. Actually, I'll, I'll skip that. Uh, this is um, close to the end. This is one that I've been working on as a digital employee. Now, a lot of people look at a digital employee and think about job losses. I actually look at it and think about opportunities. What would happen if this digital employee could speak 120 languages in Palmerston North? What could that do to our communication, the ability to actually help them? And, and again, 30 seconds. 
So if we said hello, Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a digital assistant. Probably a bit low. Super eager to be the face we did this the on a weekend. One weekend, we built I a digital. I work for companies around the world, helping them with their customer services. I was born in New Zealand, so I love the idea of helping Kiwis all around the country in a role at local government. There's so much I could do. Want to do a role play? We haven't got time. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the world is changing. You can see that um, even the World Cup rugby may be become the World Cup in sports, <laughs> electronic games, catching on around the world. Um, in Palmerston North, this is a tank for so lifestyle blocks, really horrible tank that people have to lift the concrete lids, put the, put the head in and figure out how much water is in the tank. In Palmerston North, a company called Blockbit has developed a sensor that will go on the tank, it will tell you on your phone what your water level is, and when it gets down low, it will contact the water supply truck company and actually deliver the water in Palmerston North. So Thomas Frey, to finish, Thomas Frey, my friend the futurist, believes, and this is his prediction, by 2030, most or the average person will own printed clothing. They will live in a printed house. They'll have packages delivered by drones. They'll own more than one robot. They'll work as a freelancer and they'll frequently use a driverless car. 2030. What an exciting time. So your journey, my journey, our journey is as citizens, as businesses, as community, as educators, as health professionals, starts now. We're on it. And there'll be humps and bumps and there'll be turns and we don't know where we're going to end up, but we're on this journey together. So like I did in China, we had to walk the Great Wall. Today is about you sharing your ideas, your concerns, your thoughts, and let's have that discussion. Thank you very much for your time. Oh my gosh, the Flippin' future is coming and hot, isn't it? Oh, cheers, Mike, for um, talking to us today. Oh, oh, cheers. Let's give another round of applause to Mike Manson. <laughs> love it, I love it. Um, you've all done very well sitting there. Good job, good job. You'll be able to stretch your little legs soon, okay? Um, so, who is going to bring some big ideas, right? So people are going to be thinking, um, obviously, Mike's talk has really... Um, like flicked a lot of switches and been like, what the heck? So um, keep those big ideas coming and we're going to um, share them. We've got a bit of a message from uh, Mia Grant-Smith. So let's uh, get that. Whether you're in business in the community, different age groups. The world is changing and the internet is transforming the way we live. To the people of Palmerston North and the Manal too, you need to get to the net area in Palmerston North in October the 5th. It's a great way that we can transform our city and we want you to be part of that transformation. 5th of October, look forward to seeing you there. Boom, shot ground, we here. So it's all, um, it's all go. I love Grant, I do, for reals. Um, but like, I'm married, he's married, it's not going to work out. That's all good. Um, so these big ideas, these big ideas, big ideas, they're coming for us, right? So um, there's a big ideas board in the registration desk, so add your ideas to them at the break, because um, we're going to be having a quidditch all about it uh, in the last session today, so make sure you're chucking down your big ideas because um, big ideas mean that people are thinking and then thinking leads to things happening and we're going to try today um, to get these ideas happening and moving and connecting you with the right people. Um, we've also got Gina and Duncan. Can we get you guys to raise your hand or like stand up? Oh, Duncan's over there, Gina's over there. They're our big ideas crew. Two people to carry all these big ideas. So, like, let's, um, if you want to talk to them, they are the people to talk to as well. So, get those big ideas. And no idea is a bad idea, you know? I once wrote to Let's Get Inventing for window wipers on glasses. They rejected it, but it was not a bad idea. It was just not the idea they were looking for, you know? So, write it down. If you want window wipers on glasses, sure. If you want bigger ideas, probably, probably, you know, 
upon reflection, that was a bad idea. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so again, we're going to break off to um, our discussions. Um, so if you're doing questions, make sure you're using a microphone because it's really important. And of course, the code of conduct, don't be a dick, just be kind. Um, and just be a generally like good person because it's better for you and um, it makes your hair shiny. Um, sweet. So you've got like five-ish minutes to get to where you want to be. If you don't know where you're going... No worries. Don't stress. Everything's going to be okay. Um, there is going to be... Oh, there you go. Look, that's where you go. You can just follow that and people move. So you move with the people. If you want to walk around and see what's going on, do um, sit down and have a look at the groups. But feel free to walk around and uh, get inspired, get those big ideas going. So go out, stretch your legs um, and get to where you need to be because uh, they're starting at 10 o'clock. So don't be late because late is bad. Cool. Have fun. See you soon. Slip not, slip not